What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in my lab in Denver, Colorado, and today I wanted to really dive into the fundamentals of grain spawn. This is grain spawn, so if you've been following along our breeding project, um, you'll know that we move our, our mushroom cultures from auger onto grains, and then they go into bulk substrate. So when I first was starting off growing mushrooms for a living, when I scaled up my production, I actually didn't even use grain spawn. So there was a few reasons why. Um, mostly it was to save money in the very beginning. So I used sawdust right off of auger and eventually went from liquid culture into sawdust and used that as a spawn before going into my bulk substrate. So it worked. Um, really well for a, quite a while and then my friend Zach who I teach classes with he kind of challenged my process and brought up all the different types of grain spawn that's available currently I mostly use oats just because of the the affordability of using oats but I've been doing that for about two years now and I wanted to really explore the differences between various types of grains. I've got five different commonly used types of grains laid out here, and basically I'll just go through them. So millet, which is a small um, little grain. I have them all weighed out in 10 gram increments here, so you can kind of see the difference in size and volume as we go through that that so millet is a pretty commonly used we've also got corn here so these are just whole kernels um, and then wheat so these are white wheat berries and all of these are organic you want to make sure you get organic grains because they could have pesticides that are antifungal um, so you want to make sure you get organic grains and then we've got our oats which I've been using for a couple years now and then um, these are rye berries, so very similar um, wheat, oats, and rye are pretty similar to each other. Millet has a lot of little grains, and then corn has fewer, larger grains. So one attribute, and maybe the most important attribute of all these grains, is the amount of surface area on the grain. So, surface area is the outside of the shell and that is where the mycelium is going to take hold and it's also where the mycelium is going to be able to leap off of the grain when you're going into a bulk substrate so millet um, because it has so many small grains is going to have the most surface area for your mycelium to grow and therefore it's going to have the more more surface area for the mycelium to spread when it goes into bulk substrate um, as opposed to corn which is going to have less surface area because it has less kernels so corn is going to have the least amount of surface area millet has the most surface area and then if you compare wheat to oats to rye they're very similar so oats is you know pretty in the middle i would say millet then rye then wheat then oats then corn or these two could be flip-flopped but that is one factor when you're looking into your grain spawn so we covered the surface area so next would be the moisture content so in order to properly um, figure out the moisture content i would have to dry these all in an oven bring them up to full capacity for holding water and then weighing the difference and that's going to give me my moisture content but another quick way to observe that is just to look at the difference between the dried grain and the hydrated grain so millet is a little bit harder to dial in as far as um, hydration the small kernels absorb water pretty fast, but you can see that they're very sensitive to bursting. So there's a less variance in um, the cooking time for millet. So corn 
has almost the opposite. Um, it's very tough to overcook corn, but you can see the difference in size as you hydrate these kernels. So I would say corn has a pretty, um, you know, middle of the road hydration, which makes it really nice because there's a big variance between having a little bit dry corn and overly hydrated corn. So they're kind of resistant to, to breaking. So then we'll go over to wheat and you notice that there's a big difference between dry wheat and whole wheat. So I think that this one has probably the most moisture holding capacity out of all these grains. So that's something to consider maybe how it would affect your yields or how it, how would it affect how you prepare your bulk substrate? So wheat definitely has a very expansive grain and um, that leads me to believe that maybe it can hold more water than the rest of them. So oats is pretty similar. It does have like a leafy outer shell, so it prevents it from grabbing as much water as the wheat berries. And then rye, is probably right between oats and wheat as far as absorption. They expanded quite a bit, but then it also has the same shape as oat kernels with maybe a little bit less of that grassy texture. All right, guys, so that kind of covers the differences between these types of grains. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around and inoculate these Piapino mushrooms into all of these grain jars and then I just wanted to observe the differences in growth and then once these colonize I'll move on to bulk substrate to kind of determine what is the speed of growth and possibly if any of these will affect the yields in the final substrate. Okay guys so I'm going to start off from left to right and I'm just going to draw up 10 mils of this liquid culture it's a little bit old, but I just grew it out, so it's it's growing pretty well. But one of the indications is this uh, mycelium line at the top. So usually I like to use them before that, but this will work perfectly for this experiment. So I'm just starting off by. drawing up my 10 cc's so everyone can see and then I want to give the same amount into every culture and I like to do it right along the front so that I can kind of observe that growth All right, so I'll just go ahead and label these lids as Piapino, and then today is the 28th of January, and these should be ready in about a week, and then it'll probably take another week or two to colonize our bulk substrate, and then we'll fruit them out with our test batches for the immaculate inoculation. And about seven days now since we inoculated these various grains with our Piapino liquid culture. I wanted to show you guys the updates after one week and I'm actually going to shake all of these grains so that they will be available for my production cycle next week. So the thought process behind shaking the grain is that all of these inoculation points which are currently colonized by the mycelium will shake all over the jar and then that will allow for the mycelium to jump in more three-dimensional directions. Some of these grains are completely surrounded by mycelium so if you shake it up and then put those grains into an area that's surrounded by grains they'll be able to utilize their energy to colonize faster. 
but before I do that I just wanted to go through and kind of observe the results so this is the millet um, very healthy growth so far you can see that there's a, a clear defined area where the injection port is and then where I inoculated that liquid culture and it's expanding down below probably you know the full region of the jar and the full length of the jar so this is the popcorn you can see it colonized the bottom of the jar pretty quickly and I, I have a feeling it's because the liquid on the outside of the corn kind of went towards the bottom and allowed that mycelium to quickly grow so my first observation is that the corn is pretty dry near the top and then the bottom has a lot of moisture and I think that once we mix this jar it will kind of homogenize that whole blend and this one's going to colonize really nicely okay so now we're gonna go on to oats and it's very similar to the millet in the fact that it's covering about the length of the bottom of the jar and there's a straight line right below the injection port so it seems to be pretty on par with the millet um, but as we move on to the wheat grain this one is very impressive it looks like it has a wider um, distribution so maybe it can I think that the wheats are holding the most water you can see the bottom of the jar is really nice and healthy there's not too much standing water which is nice because if if there was any kind of bacterial contaminant and there is a lot of standing water like in the popcorn it could easily spread throughout the whole jar but this one is pretty nice on the bottom overall I think that wheat looks the healthiest right now compared to rye which is very similar but this is kind of right in between oats and wheat it hydrated really nicely but I feel like the wheat just holds a little bit more water and it's doing a little bit better so now that we've gone through our observations I'm going to shake up these jars and then I'll put them back into incubation for about five or six more days before we move into um, bulk substrate okay so I'm just gonna shake these up um, one tip is that you can use a tire or something um, if you're concerned about breaking the, the jar what I do is I'll just look for some cracks and honestly I'm not even shaking them that hard I don't normally do this usually just for breeding projects and if I was making a master jar that would be used to inoculate larger grain spawn bags I would shake it to speed it for colonization however there's another technique for shaking jars or another reason maybe you want to slow down your spawn so that it doesn't begin to fruit prematurely and I actually had to do that this week for some of our breeding projects so I'm shaking them up on a Thursday so that by next Tuesday they'll be ready for production okay so this is the wheat and you can see how nicely these are moving around I don't even really have to shake this one but I'm just trying to evenly distribute all those grains in the jar and that way you are maximizing the surface area of the mycelium because some of those grains that are completely surrounded by the mycelium are now going to be completely surrounded by new grains so that they can expand and move on and the popcorn seems to be mixing up really nicely and now for the millet which is really kind of clumped together but I have a feeling that with the amount of inoculation points this one is going to make some really nice spawn for the bulk substrate okay guys so that was my mixing day it's Thursday I should be able to put these into 
our bulk production by early next week. It's been about five days now since I shook these grain jars. And we are going to be inoculating these into bulk substrate. So the millet surprisingly colonized really well, really quickly. It definitely had like a really dense region. And then when I broke that up, it seemed to colonize the fastest. So maybe a day or two ago, popcorn is also looking really nice. It has some thicker regions here. I could probably let these go a couple more days, but I'm kind of on a time crunch. So I wanted to throw them right into fruiting. This is the oats. It looks really healthy. The wheat also is looking really nice. And unfortunately, this rye grain um, kind of stalled out after I shook it. So you can see there's still some mycelium present. So I'm going to go ahead and inoculate it anyway. But right there, that kind of shows the trials and tribulations of doing these types of experiments. I don't know why it stalled out. Possibly it was too dry. Maybe the grains didn't hydrate correctly, but I did do the same procedure across the board for hydration. So these rye grains might've just been a little bit on the drier side. I'm going to give it my best shot anyway, and hopefully we get some good results when they're colonizing. I would really like to see the difference in inoculation points, maybe after four or five days. Okay, so I'll flip this around and we'll do our bulk inoculation and then I'll do an update on incubation and I'll put them into fruiting so that we'll have the final results for this whole entire experiment. I'm super excited to put this video out. So give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying our mycology content. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more videos like these. I'm going to be doing a lot more experimentation, just trying to figure out the best techniques and procedures for my own farm and then sharing it with you guys. What's up everyone? It's been 10 days since we inoculated our bulk substrate with various grains that were colonized by the Piapino mushrooms. And I wanted to go over my initial observations from grain onto bulk substrate. You can see millet, which definitely colonized the grain the fastest, is moving along pretty nicely. Um, my thoughts on this grain are that 
it has many inoculation points which is a benefit however each one of those points is very small so it takes a while for them to get going but you can see how nice and spread out that grain spawn is and this one should be colonized by the end of the weekend so that was millet so now i'll go on to rye so the rye berries are definitely performing the best on bulk substrate um, when they're in the grain spawn they kind of stalled out so i thought maybe um, they were too dry or something but then once i put them back onto a bulk substrate they plumped right back up and this one is definitely the furthest along after 10 days um, so this is all the same strain and the same volume of spawn per block which is a half pint and you can see how well these rye berries are performing so next we'll move on to oats which this is the the grain that these piapino have been growing on since spore this is my grain of choice um, mostly because of the price but you can see it's probably you know c plus b minus middle of the road performance but for the price i'm not too disappointed um okay so now we'll go on to wheat berries so this one is also outperforming the rest i would say possibly tied with with rye so wheat berries which seem to hydrate the best are actually colonizing really nicely as well so i'm super excited to see the mushrooms that come out of the wheat i'm still kind of tossing the coin between wheat and rye perhaps a blend of those grains would be really nice but yeah we'll 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 see what happens in fruiting but so far wheat wheat and rye are one and two pretty close oats coming in third and then millet and then i'll show you guys corn what's happening with that so you can see you know the size of the grains of corn is pretty large and that becomes an apparent problem at least with the volume of spawn that i'm spawning these bags so they're very spread apart and that's just because of the nature of the corn it has less surface area however wherever these kernels are colonizing they're pretty dense and robust colonies so once all of those kind of fuse together it's going to give it a really nice bulk substrate but probably the slowest colonizer out of all of these grains tested it's going to get really busy really quickly but i'm trying to keep up with my cultures and as soon as we get our new strains from our breeding project i have all of those different phenotypes already QC'd on liquid culture so as soon as we find a winner I'm going to release those and also do a selected amount of G1 slant cultures from those phenotypes so a lot going on right before the farmers market season but I'm getting really excited for this year we're going to be building out our building um, it's been delayed a little bit because of the weather whenever you're building something expect it to take twice as long as what you initially planned so I'm not trying to rush through things but it's going to be a very busy summer and I'll try to keep up with releasing these new strains as we figure out which ones are the best in the fruiting chamber so I let these go a couple more days and we've got our front runner for grain so the wheat the piapino on wheat is the first to colonize followed up by rye and then oats which is my go-to spawn that i'm i've been using for a few years now and then millet and followed by popcorn at the end so i think that the rye and oats are going to be fully colonized within 24 hours and then probably millet and popcorn or corn is going to be trailing behind by a couple days or so i will go ahead and put these into the walk-in once they get fully colonized and once i get back from my trip i will fruit all these out along with our phenotypes that we are breeding 
for our immaculation, um, inoculation project or the breeding project for 2022. I just wanted to do an update and we've got some really nice results. 12 days, so 12 days wheat, probably 14, 14 days for millet and corn and 13-ish, 14 days for rye and oats. So thanks for watching along and I will continue this video as we get further and further into getting towards fruiting. Yay. What's up everyone? I've got the bulk substrate bags from my grain experiment. So we've got the millet, rye, oats, corn, and wheat on the end. All of them seem to be fully colonized. I put them in the refrigerator for about eight days while I was on my trip in Florida. And one interesting thing I noted is that on this millet bag, you can see right here there's an example um, it looks like it's already pinning so that is one thing that I was very surprised the millet is the only bag that is pinning eight days in so I'm going to put them into our fruiting room that we just fired up there are 38 other phenotypes in there from the breeding experiment but I'm going to place these on the middle rack on the other side to kind of keep things consistent if you haven't seen any of my previous videos on fruiting out uh, top fruiting mushrooms I like to put a rubber band about an inch below the surface of the substrate and that way it prevents side pins from fruiting and then I will put them usually on a lower rack in the grow room because the co2 will tend to fall lower and um, these are piapino so they can tolerate a, a lot more co2 than say an oyster mushroom so I'll put them on the rack and then I will cut a few slits in the top to allow for evaporation and that way it will trigger more pinning but so far we've got some tiny little pin sets on the millet and all of these are fully colonized and ready for fruiting so you can see the humidity is going we've got all of our other bags on this side and I laid out all of the piapinos with the different grains on this middle shelf here so I'll just go through and cut three slits pretty evenly spaced on each of these bags and then I will update you guys once we get some um, some pin sets and then I'll try to weigh them all out to see if there's a difference in yield between all these different grain types. To move these piapino bags down to the lower shelf because they kept sliding through the one um, across from the on the grow tent so I wanted to do an update on the uh, pin sets after five days so we put these into fruiting five days ago and we've already got a substantial amount of pins so this is the millet this is the oats. And then we've got the wheat over here. So basically all of them except for the popcorn are showing pin sets after five days. So this is one week into fruiting and it looks like millet kind of took the lead on the pinning and we've also got our wheat and rye and oats showing some pins. Okay you guys this is eight days in and let's take a peek. We've got our rye that is pinning substantially, our millet which is actually looking really nice look at all those pin sets then we'll come up to our oats and we've got a decent amount happening 
sporadically. Finally, it looks like the popcorn is really starting to pin. We've got our wheat. That's looking really nice too. So it seems like the millet is the furthest along the way. And then probably rye and oats and wheat and then popcorn just started pinning eight days in. All right, everyone, it is 12 days into fruiting and everything is pinning now behind me. So let's take a look, um, a deeper look into these bags and see what's going on. I've got all the mushrooms kind of laid out on this cart here and I'll just go through the different grain types and the progress that they're at and I'll show you a tip that I have for kind of elongating these pins and and then you know filling out the canopy at the top which is kind of just a temperamental procedure of introducing fresh air exchange so right in front here are the millet so this is the bag that was spawned with millet it took a very short amount of time to fill the grain but then when it went into bulk substrate it kind of lagged but then it quickly caught up and pinned before any of the other bags and you can see it's the farthest along really good yield really good pin sets so i'm surprised with how well the millet recovered in the long term i'll go ahead and slice the top of this bag to give it a little bit more air exchange and you can see the nice structure of those mushrooms maybe they'll be ready in two days and we'll do like a final yield on all of these off the first flush if you look next in line we've got our rye um, so these ones are definitely pinning nicely there's quite a bit of side pins which compared to this millet there's not too much side pins maybe the uh, rubber band wasn't placed around as tightly but regardless this is showing a really nice pin set and then if we move on to wheat which is next you can see that this one is destroying it with these pin sets as well so rye and wheat definitely have really nice pin sets but they're probably two or three days behind the millet and then we'll look at our corn which is the same same thing really nice pins there's some some blank spots and then oats which is what I currently use is uh, you know surprisingly lagging behind by a few days so order of magnitude of, uh, after 12 days in the fruiting we've got our millet which is probably two days ahead of the rest and then we've got the rye the wheat and the corn kind of all about two days behind and then the oats is surprisingly lagging behind about three days behind the millet um, but it's going to come down to yields and some other factors when deciding you know what's the ultimate green but so far millet is surprisingly taking the lead and it's got a really nice pin set all right so i'll show you guys a trick for how i develop my piapino so when they have about two or three days before fruiting I will just go through and cut a line at the top here and that allows for that air exchange for the final days of growing out. So I'll flip this camera around and do just a quick snapshot of what I do two days or three days before picking my mushroom. Okay, so you can see that Piapini with the millet is developing a really nice pin set. We've got the corn over here rye wheat and oats and i'll go ahead and make my horizontal cuts that i do right before pinning so i'll try to get a really nice visual on this i'm using a clean blade but you can see those nice beautiful mushrooms All right, so I popped these back on the rack.
harvest is ready from our grain experiment. I'll show you the the perfect time to pick these Piapino mushrooms is right when the veil is starting to come off. So I'll flip this around and show you guys how I decipher when to harvest and then I'll weigh these out and then as the rest of these fruits start to pop I'll pick those and just go off first flush um, weights for yield and then we'll evaluate at the very end what grain is the best for making grain spawn at least for piapino mushrooms. Okay, so you can see the nice canopy here it's pretty packed to the brim and then if you come over and look on the side the veil is just starting to come off so that is the perfect time to harvest these piapino. You can see the other ones are right behind. But I'll go ahead and harvest these ones which are on millet. Just use the scale to get a quick weight on these. They should be pretty easy to harvest. This is my tip for second flushes. I'll just create these little side flaps by cutting up the gusset. And that way you can just kind of fold them over for the second flush. Okay, so look at that. Beautiful flush on millet. So that was first flush on millet. Let's see how much this weighs. There's a little substrate on there, but one and a half pounds is pretty good for Piapino. And that's off the first flush. And you can see there's already pins on the way for that second flush usually i'll go through and just kind of peel these back because oftentimes they'll just abort but if you're really careful not like what i just did you can harvest around these and then get some continuous growth i'll just go through and pick the rest of these off and wait for the rest of those grains to to pop and then i'll get weights on those so the millet first to fruit at one and a half pounds or one pounds and 8.3 ounces. All right guys, so it's been about 24 hours and it actually looks like popcorn is next for harvest. So you can see we've got the veil just coming off and same thing with these rye, the mushrooms on rye. So let's go grab a weight on these. All right, so first up is the Piapini on rye. Let's get a weight on these guys. Point two six, and then we'll do popcorn. All right, so we've got corn next.
chances. All right. All right, guys, so it's been another 20 hours, and it looks like it's time to harvest the last two grains. So up top, we've got wheat. You can see the bales just starting to break on those. And lastly, we've got oats with some cool enoki in the background. Um, but I'll get the final weigh-in on these last two bags. Alright, so first we've got our wheat. This is the wheat mushrooms. Beautiful flush. So it looks like one pound, six ounces. All right, and then lastly, we've got these oats. Looking really thick and meaty. over a pound on that guy so the final results are in for the grain experiment um, before I get started with that I just would like everyone to go check out my new book on Etsy growing gourmet mushrooms for market um, it's a how-to guide on how to get your farm started and it has a lot of cool links integrated into the ebook so I decided to go with an ebook because I could link videos and um, products that I use directly from the book to answer a lot of questions that everyone typically asks me. So I hope you guys enjoy that. I know a bunch of you have already um, bought it and I've gotten really good feedback. But if you haven't had a chance to go read that, it's on our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. Okay, so for the final results of the project, the millet was first on grain um, for colonization time and then rye was last. I think that the small inoculation points with the millet allowed it to colonize really quickly when I did my shake. Moving on to bulk substrate, rye caught up really quickly. It was one of the first to colonize along with wheat and then last was popcorn. So millet first on the grains itself then rye was the first to colonize the bulk substrate. Millet was first to pin, surprisingly. And last was corn. So millet started to take the lead after bulk colonization. And then millet was the first to fruit by a day after 12 days on grain, two weeks on bulk, and then two weeks to harvest, followed by rye and corn, which was about 20 hours later. And then last was wheat and oats, which was two days behind millet. So then, as far as the yields go, millet yielded 24.3 ounces on the first flush, followed by wheat, which was 21.9, corn, 
had 20.6 ounces. Rye was 18.7, and oats was the last at 17 ounces on the first flush. So then I went ahead and did my, my cost analysis, and it looks like oats, I'm going to stick with oats still because they are 36 cents an ounce compared to if I purchased millet, where I can find it at the local grain store, it's going to cost me about $1.50 per ounce. So oats took an extra two days and it yielded almost half a pound less. It's still the cheaper option for me. So I'm going to stick with oats. If you are lucky enough to be able to afford millet less than $20 a bag, good for you. I would switch to millet. My next you know, project is going to be sourcing grain. So if anyone has a suggestion in the Colorado area, I used to get my grains from High Plains Cattle, but they recently closed their closest location. So I have been kind of searching and trying to find a new source for wheat or oats, but I do have a pretty good stock and it's really cheap. So I'm just going off the bottom line, but I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'm gonna be doing a lot more experiments like these. Please leave your comments below, subscribe, if you haven't subscribed yet, and until next time, much love.